Hey, how's everyone doing? Welcome to the channel. I'm Jay, my channel is Square Pegs, and I wanted to talk to you today about what is my favorite console of all time, the Nintendo 3DS. I have been going back to this one a lot lately, knowing that the 3DS eShop is shutting down, knowing that we're about to get the final nail in the coffin for this console right here, and I really just wanted to go back to it and let you know what are the 10 games that I keep going back to. Hey, if you're new around here, please consider subscribing. I do two videos a week talking about the best in retro and modern gaming. I'd love to have you stick around. Now, one second. Before you watch this video, yes, it's only 10 games. Yes, there are going to be games that you think should be on here that are not on here. Trust me, there will be another entry down the road. I promise you, it will happen. Just hold tight, give me a month or two, okay? So what do you say, let's go to the 3DS and take a look at the 10 games I keep coming back to. The Legend of Zelda a Link Between Worlds is one of those games that I think a lot of folks really love, but kind of forget about because it's completely housed on a handheld platform. And I'm here to tell you that it is by far one of the absolute premier Zelda games that Nintendo has ever produced. Featuring a fantastic visual style, gorgeous music, and the signature combat and gameplay style that so many other great versions of Link's adventures have portrayed, where A Link Between Worlds really sets itself apart from the other entries in the series, is the MacGuffin of the game. Link is able to turn himself into a two-dimensional being, like a painting, and move along flat surfaces, allowing him to traverse what would otherwise be unreachable terrain or areas of a dungeon. And all that would be great, but you couple that with an absolutely incredible story with some of the best dialogue and script work that Nintendo Treehouse localization has ever done, and you're in for an absolute treat. The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds is not just a great 3DS game, it's legit a superlative entry in the Zelda mythos, and I'd honestly probably put it in my top three in the series, with many days where I would probably consider it my favorite. I wish I was able to capture this directly from my 3DS rather than utilizing an emulator for this, because I think it's going to betray a lot of the fidelity in the game due to the slowdown and general emulation issues, but the game itself is enjoyable no matter how it's played. I love this one. One of my favorite things Nintendo did on the Wii U and the 3DS were the NES Remix games, and they're so brilliantly simple in their executions. Take classic NES games like Super Mario Bros., Donkey Kong, Excite Bike, Kirby, Dr. Mario, stuff like that, Chop them up into bite-sized pieces like some of the mini-games from the 9-volt levels in WarioWare, and toss a bunch of random-ass tasks to complete within a time frame, and boom! You've got one of the most fun interpretations of classic games I've ever played. Everything from trying to eliminate a moving virus in Dr. Mario, to jumping over three barrels normally in Donkey Kong, to something as simple as speedrunning level 1-1 in Super Mario Bros. make this one of the most easy-to-pick-up-and-play games I've ever experienced. It's legitimately just such a joy to jump back into these classic games and play them in slightly new ways. The Cave Story has long been one of my favorite independent titles, and the Cave Story 3D release on the 3DS does so, so much to, I don't want to say improve upon the original, but it does enough to set itself apart from the OG release. First and foremost, the game background's environments are now rendered in 3D rather than in sprites, so the game now looks almost completely different than its original release, but it's still familiar enough that if you've played the initial version, it'll feel familiar. The gameplay is still solid, and everything moves exactly how you'd expect. The music in the game has seen an upgrade akin to the graphics where everything feels familiar, just plussed over the original release. And in-game, it's actually a bit more forgiving than the original release was, with far more health packs to pick up, meaning your adventures in the world of Cave Story can go on a little bit longer. That's a good thing, because there's also been four more areas added to the game. Is it a huge improvement over the original? Nah. But is it fun? Oh hell yes. The Mario & Luigi series is one of my favorites. It's something I adored back on the Game Boy Advance, and something I continue to enjoy up through the 3DS. And seriously, Nintendo, where is my Mario & Luigi remastered collection for the Switch? Come on, I'm begging here. Every Mario RPG game is a hit for me, and this takes one of the best in the series, Superstar Saga on the Game Boy Advance, and remasters it for the 3DS, giving you incredible gameplay, beautiful graphics, and legitimately some of the funniest writing for Mario that I've ever experienced. One of the things I love about the Mario & Luigi games is the world traversal, Having the different interactive objects that are dependent upon which brother you happen to be controlling, like the brother blocks that you can get tons of coins out of if you correctly jump quickly in sequence by alternating between the A and B buttons. In combat, though, that's where the game really sings, giving you timing-based mechanics to inflict extra attacks or damage, as well as allowing you to jump to avoid or lessen the damage you take from enemy attacks. I was worried when this initially released that it wasn't going to have the same level of magic or polish that the original Game Boy Advance release did, but those fears were put to rest as soon as I played it. It's not only as good as the GBA original, the quality of life improvements as well as the inclusion of the Bowser's Minion Side Story game improves on an already excellent title. While I don't often talk about Pokemon on the channel, it's not because I don't love the games. Quite to the contrary, 
I've been playing them since Blue launched, and it's long been one of my favorite franchises. And there's plenty of great Pokemon games on the 3DS, but I'm particularly partial to Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. I love the Alola setting, and really feel like the changes that they made to the way the game is laid out and executed, by doing away with traditional gym battles in favor of the Kahuna challenges for each island, spoke incredibly highly of the determination of the Pokemon Company to make something unique. And I suspect that I'm probably in the minority in that regard. I know it was a great departure for a lot of people and they weren't a huge fan, but for me, it was the most fun I'd had in Pokemon in ages. The Alolan form Pokemon were great. I love that your rival wasn't really a rival per se, he was just a friend you grew up with. And I really enjoyed the world design in the Alolan Islands. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are good improvements, albeit probably unnecessary ones over Vanilla Sun and Moon, but I think the quality of life improvements and story changes by giving you an honest-to-god gym, which, while I don't really care about it, should make a lot of people happy, as well as giving you more post-game content, puts them over the edge for me. I mean, come on, of course Shantae is on the list. I mean, I've been playing Shantae for over a decade now. I jumped on with Risky's Revenge, and I was so damn excited when Pirate's Curse released on the 3DS. Visually, this game is leaps ahead of the previous two entries in the series, but it still has that signature way-forward pixel art polish to it that just gives so much depth and life to Shantae's world. Animations are amazing, with detailed character and enemy sprites moving all over the screen, as well as gorgeously detailed environments for Shantae to hair whip and jump through. Pirate's Curse did something really interesting for the series. It took all of Shantae's transformation powers away from her as a result of Risky's Revenge, but it allowed you to explore a huge world in search of pirate artifacts, giving Shantae a ton of fun attacks and abilities to traverse each level. The music in the game is also incredible, which has kind of become an unheralded signature for way forward titles. But my favorite thing, as always with the Shantae games, is the actual gameplay. It's equal parts classic platformer action while still showing that it is decidedly ret to go to blaze its own path. It's a pricey title nowadays. I was lucky enough to get this when I did because it's now well over $70 complete in box, but it's an incredible experience and well worth tracking down digitally on other platforms like the Switch if you're a fan of the Shantae series. There's something to be said about Square Enix being able to continuously find new ways to make RPGs interesting. But I'll be honest with you, when I first saw footage of Bravely Default, I didn't care. It didn't do much for me visually at a casual glance, and I didn't do enough digging into the game before it released to really see it for what it is. One of the most impressively designed RPGs I've ever played. The Brave and Default systems that allow you to defend to bank attacks or execute multiple attacks in a row is brilliantly implemented and gives a layer of strategy to an already impressive combat system. The world itself is stunningly rendered, and while it admittedly took some getting used to, the character designs have grown on me to the point where they just feel like a different version of the character-based designs from Final Fantasy Tactics. The world in the game is massive and the traditional RPG tropes are in place, with a plethora of random encounters, treasure to discover, dungeons and caves to dive through, and memorable characters that frequently feature fantastic voice acting all over an amazing score composed by Revo and performed by Sound Horizon. It's truly one of the best RPGs I've ever played, and one that I've gone back to numerous times, and it's the one that laid the groundwork for my adoration of Bravely Default 2 on the Switch. As much as I love the Shantae series, this right here, Shovel Knight, this is the game that really got me to fall in love with independent video games. When Shovel Knight first got announced on Kickstarter, I was beyond skeptical that they'd be able to deliver on the promises they were making. But I'll be damned if Yacht Club Games not only delivered on the promise, but exceeded every single expectation that was out there. Shovel Knight is, at its core, a very straightforward and simple platformer. You're going to traverse huge levels, find loot, kill enemies, and fight bosses. And that'd be plenty. But instead we got one of the most polished, best playing, and downright hardest platformers I've ever booted up. Shovel Knight is frequently unforgiving and brutal in its execution of its level designs, with challenging jumps, enemy placements, and boss fights that really keep you on your toes and make you have to maintain your focus and time your movements and jumps accurately. But while it's unforgiving, the game is so ridiculously rewarding, with a compelling story, amazing enemies, fantastic boss characters, brilliant and hilarious writing, and some of the absolute best and most satisfying gameplay I've ever experienced in a game. I come back to Shovel Knight regularly on multiple consoles, whether it's the Wii U, Switch, or PC, but the one I played first, and the one I play most frequently, is on the 3DS. I admit it, the inclusion of this game might raise some eyebrows, but hear me out. Despite the fact that Codename Steam only sold something like 10 copies here in the States, okay, in all honesty it was actually 31,000 copies, but the point remains, it didn't do well. And despite the fact that the premise is weird, 
And yes, the game is deeply flawed. I mean, enemy turns take like a millennia to complete. I legit believe this is one of the most unique and smartly designed games on the 3DS. I love that this is Nintendo's version of Valkyria Chronicles from Sega, all while cramming in an amazing steampunk design aesthetic from an alternate universe, memorable characters like Abraham Lincoln, John Henry, Tom Sawyer, Dorothy Gale from The Wizard of Oz. This is basically an episode or an issue of Marvel's What If, where Nintendo made the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. And then there's the copious amounts of Lovecraft influences in the enemy designs, and the fact that Miskatonic University is part of the game's lore. There's the gorgeous comic book design motif throughout everything, a voice cast that includes Will Wheaton, Grey Delisle, Adam Baldwin, and Michael Dorn. There's so much to enjoy about this game that I truly wish more people had given it a chance. It's a fantastically fun strategy RPG. It is legitimately like a $12 game when it's brand new. I absolutely think this is going to be one of those, how did I never know about this games in about 10 years? Because so many people have overlooked this incredible fever dream mashup of pop culture, history, and folklore from Nintendo. They know I'm here. Another platformer and a fantastic entry from Ubisoft here with Rayman Origins. First and foremost, Ubi Art Framework has produced an absolute visual stunner again. Like everything Ubi Art Framework touches is gorgeous. Seriously, this is one of the best looking platformers on the 3DS, rivaling first party releases from Nintendo. The gameplay is familiar, fast, and fluid, and everything just works. I'm a huge fan of Rayman Legends, and as great as that game is, it owes so much to what was established in Origins. Fun platforming, easy to pick up and play combat, gorgeous visuals, and incredible design work abound, all with a memorable soundtrack and memorable characters for you to meet and fight. It's honestly a nearly perfect game, and something that was a triumphant return for Rayman after having not starred in his own game since 2003. It's an incredibly fun game, and really that's one of the biggest issues with doing this video. There's so many really fun games on the 3DS. I didn't mention Fire Emblem, or Super Mario 3D World, or Project Cross Zone, or Steam World. Now, like I said at the end of that video right there with talking about Rayman, this isn't every game that I keep coming back to. These are just the 10 that I picked out right now. There will be more down the road. I would love to hear from you, though, in the comments, what games are the ones that you keep coming back to? Big thank you to my patrons and channel members you're seeing on screen right now. I could not do any of these videos without you guys. I truly appreciate the support and the continued encouragement to keep making great videos. I want to thank everyone for watching today. I appreciate you guys spending some time with me. So until next time, remember to play more games, stay square, and take care. I'll talk to you soon.